This time, a blast from the Star Trek past. Greetings, Dave here, GCPFX. Today I want to talk about something I found while I was rooting around looking for a pen. I found my servo. Now, for those who don't know what this is, um, Star Trek, the original series, as most people know, ran for three seasons. Uh, at the end of season two, episode 26, there was one called Assignment Earth. It was up uh, March 29th, 1968. It was, as I said, the final ep of season two. And what it was, it was a very, very cool backdoor pilot for a show called Assignment Earth. Um, for some unknown reason, it opens up with the Enterprise is in the past, just doing some historical researching. Why? Anyway, um, the Enterprise interrupts this transport beam from thousands of light years away and Gary Seven materializes on the Enterprise. Uh, Gary Seven was a character played by uh, Robert Ladd Lansing. He uh, was Gary Seven or Supervisor 194. He was a human who was trained by aliens to protect the Earth. Uh, when he first lands on the Enterprise, they're not sure what to do with them, so he sees the Enterprise there and he tries to get free and Spock tries the... and uh, can't do it. Interesting. They eventually knock him out with the phaser and they lock him up. They didn't check him for weapons. What he had on him was his servo. This is something I found on the RPF. Uh, they were so great I bought two of them. There's one still uh, in the box. I haven't even opened it up yet. This is a great little device and this is probably they took the the cue from Sonic Screwdriver because it's the same, it does everything. Now what Gary would do, let me just put this away here, uh, he's locked up in the uh, the brig, and he goes. He pulls out the servo, and he just sort of rotates, and and then he's able to get out of the cell. And then he uses the servo to, um, well, especially put it. He adjusts a, a security guard's disposition, makes him very happy. Um, Anyway, this is a great little prop because it's it's so simple. Like it, when you look at it in the show, when I first saw it when I was a kid, because '68 I was what one years old, so I probably saw it in the '70s uh, in the reruns. I saw all my Star Treks in the reruns because I was much too young. But um, it's really it's quite simple. All you do is you have these bits here which are knurled and they're twisty, 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 and then this is just some prongs on a spring, and this holds it in place. Now in the show they'd add a little effect which I'll do here. But really, it's a nice, simple, uh, because it's a futuristic tech, you don't need to see all the bells and all the wiring behind it, everything else. It's just it's a great little prop and it's really just to, to carry around. It looks kind of cool. Other things I had, uh, my friend Dan, who I mentioned before, he was uh, a fan as well. So he made up. Part of the show was he, Gary Seven, is trying to protect mankind from itself. Uh, the aliens have seen where mankind is going, so they've trained different supervisors. There's a whole lot of backstory here, but the two supervisors who were working on this disappeared, so Gary had to come from the planet to save everything. But anyway, uh, he ends up going to a McKinley uh, rocket base. And my friend Dan made this cool prop from the show. So McKinley is a Cape Canaveral uh, analogy. Uh, analogy. It's the same thing, it's just a rocket base, and in the end Gary saves everyone. But he's just got really cool tech. He's got, you know, his big computer and he teleports through a vault. And um, one thing's great about it, Robert Lance, who was a great actor, he's a great character actor for years. Those of you look at him going, oh, he looks kind of familiar. If you watch anything in the 60s and 70s and 80s, you saw him in it. In fact, even in the 90s and early 2000s, he, uh, well, I guess the 90s at this point, he played the police captain father of Peter Kane in Kung Fu, The Legend Continues. Great actor. Um, Terry Garzen as well, as a, you know, a young Terry Garz, a great, uh, a great role for her as well. I just love the fact, you know, it just was so, it took me so out of it because Star Trek was all in the future and suddenly we're back in time. Now, granted, this is the second time this season that they were back in time because they had the other episode with the uh, fighter pilot. I guess maybe the writer's room was running out of ideas. 
And it's much easier to do something in our time or their time in the 60s than it is to do it futuristic all the time. But I saw this. I have another one, the servo, not as good. Uh, not, the quality's not as good and the, the balls are too big and it's, it doesn't quite fold up correctly. Still, great problem. One thing also uh, sparked my interest in this again is I was looking through my stack of comics. I've said before I have 36, 38 long boxes and I found a trade paper book I bought paper back I bought uh, a couple of years ago. John Byrne, uh, a very prolific writer and uh, artist, he did the iconic X-Men, he did uh, the reboot of Superman in the 80s, he did the Fantastic Four, like he did 68 issues in a row of, uh, of Fantastic Four. At one point he's writing and drawing like four books a month. It's unbelievable. I love his work. Anyway, he loves to do Star Trek. He had a four issue thing on um, Dr. McCoy. Uh, it was it's funny, I always want to say Hank McCoy, not Bones McCoy, because another famous McCoy. He did a four issue on that. He also did a five issue on um, Gary Seven and the assignment Earth. Uh, Gary Seven's been around for a while. He's also in the Eugenics War and his other uh, books as well. But I just, I loved it. So I'm just, at this point, I've got the digital copy of the trade on my iPad. I'm going to read it again. It's so much fun. One thing I found years ago too on eBay. Only a few of these were made that I've been able to find. Great little pin. I don't wear it much just because it's uh, it's kind of rare. That's my video for today. I just thought I would talk about that. I love this when it came on. Every time it came on, again, it reminds oh, got to watch it again. You've seen this so many times. I'm watching it again. And even the things that he has now are sort of close to what we have, like the little cube that is the computer interface and other things. I loved it. I wish it had become a pilot. It would have been fun to watch. But if it's in butts for wishes and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas, right? Anyway, thanks for coming in. Appreciate you uh, stopping by again. Uh, appreciate all the new subscribers that are coming through. I uh, hope you enjoy this video and I hope you come back for some more.